What's going on everybody? Today, I want to talk about the three best aura ring alternatives. Now, I decided to take this one a little bit into a different direction and, you know, focus on the technology aspect of it, you know, and focus on the primary biomarker and the main function, and that is heart rate variability. The most important function, perhaps, you know, in my eyes, and I think probably 80% of the users of Aura Ring is heart rate variability or HRV. So this video isn't going to be about HRV specifically. We have other videos to that I'll link in the description, uh, you know, describing what HRV is, how does it work, yada, yada. You guys can take a look at that in another video. So if you've clicked on this video, you know that Aura Ring is a popular wearable technology company and they've actually been around for much longer than people realize you know we used to attend the same trade shows very early on you know five to ten years ago so you know this is a product that they've been developing for quite some time so i'm very familiar with their history and just their progress which has has been interesting to say the least to see where the product is now you know in the very beginning they were heavily promoting heart rate variability. You know, the term heart rate variability, they used it in their marketing copy, they used it everywhere on their website. And it was, you know, they realized how big of a feature it was. And in the past couple of years, as I'm going through their website, they're not really making mention of it. They are just mentioning simple things of, you know, what HRV is helping and what it does. So in the past few years, you're actually seeing the shift away from HRV. And they're going into other avenues that, you know, don't take that much technological advancement you know they're providing content you know videos and and and, and sound to provide stress-free you know kind of a stress-free thing i don't know but you know it's always a huge red flag when a company is going towards the content space of things because you know like they say content is king i think you can make money off content but it's not at the crux of what made the company so successful you know they're going away from that and you know probably one of the biggest pain points for any customers is that the cost i mean i just gotta say if i'm paying 400 dollars or more for a ring it better be a wedding attached to it you know a lot of people aren't going to dish out 400 dollars for a simple ring that you know you can find very similar functions on other products that are a quarter of the cost but, you know, it's part of their transition. It's part of their marketing. You know, they have Odell Beckham Jr. They have Chris Paul. They have tons of athletes and celebrities that they're endorsing. I mean, that's part of the main reason that price uh, price point is where it is. So without further ado, let's go through the list. Uh, these three products that I found, they're all very different in their own way, which is why I wanted to provide people that are looking at Aura Ring or they're looking at other products like Apple and Fitbit to just see what the range is out there. And this is kind of based on heart rate variability, right? This is the center of the, this is the center of the matter in my eyes and for the purpose of this video. So the first product is a product called Upmood. So Upmood is a wearable technology company out of Hong Kong, and they also have put their unique spin on heart rate variability. You know, HRV is such an interesting tool and you can present it in different ways on each companies each company presents it in different ways and what upmood has done is they are showing you biofeedback in the form of mood as an example if you're familiar with heart rate variability the apple watch shows you milliseconds right so you record hrv throughout the day and it shows you milliseconds it's very confusing i, I a lot of people don't understand uh even the professionals. And then, you know, there's other companies like Whoop, which shows you a score out of 100, makes sense, right? The higher it is, the better the score. And with Upmood, they have various levels of mood. So if you're recording it and your HRV is low, they're showing you different moods, essentially, and they're connected to emoji. So it's actually a very fun way and a really easy way for you to measure heart rate variabilities. Now they have a bracelet, they have an app, so it's all very convenient and it has it's at a very, very good uh, price point. I don't actually know it off the top of my head, but I'm gonna it's gonna be somewhere here in the video. But it's I remember it being a very good price point. Great company, you know, I've used the product before. They are a competitor, but you know what? 
you know, sometimes you got to give credit where credit is due. They're doing a really good job. Very simple, you know, nice and easy, no complications, good price. What more could you ask for? Now, the second product on the list is our very own iOS Smart Sleeve. You know, one of the main differences between the iOS Smart Sleeve and any other device is that it is the heart rate variability is ECG based. Now, this might not make a lot of sense, but so there's two ways to extract heart rate variability from someone. You can either use a PPG sensor, which is the standard optical sensor used for BPM, right? The same exact sensor. If you've used a Fitbit or an Apple Watch before, you turn it around, you're seeing those lights. That's exactly what that is. And the other way is using an electrocardiogram, an ECG or an EKG, right? And the difference between the two is EKG is about 30 times more accurate because of the sample rate. And the sample rate, not to get crazy technical, the sample rate is how many times the sensor is communicating back to the phone or back to the device itself. And the more often, so the more points, data points you have, the more accurate of a picture that you're getting of your HRV. And if you read a lot of medical studies in regards to heart rate variability, they say EKG is king, right? EKG is the gold standard of what you should measure it to because, you know, optical sensors are great because they are inexpensive. They are very easy to put in any device. They're very small and they're ubiquitous. They're found everywhere in the wearable market. So it makes sense from a production standpoint. It makes sense from a commercial standpoint. You can do a lot with it but the inaccuracies are definitely there. You know, what really separates the iOS smart sleeve with other devices is not only that it's EKG based, because I do think Polar has some version of an EKG. Uh, I looked into it, but it's, it's very murky, the, the way that they explain. Anyway, I, I think they do, so we'll give credit there. But aside from our two companies, I don't think anybody does it EKG based. The other thing is the way that HRV is presented on the IO Health app. You know, you are able to monitor throughout the day. You're able to place events, right? So we call them events. You go to measure HRV and it asks you, what are you doing at this moment in time? Is it the morning? Is it before work, after work, before food, after food, before workout, after workout, uh, before bed? Uh, I think I'm missing a few there. But what that does is it gives you an idea of what your HRV is throughout the day, right? The whole point of it is to establish what your HRV baseline is, seeing which parts of the day it's good and which parts of the day is bad. Your morning readiness will determine how well you slept the night before, uh, before and after food will show you how heavy that food was on your digestive system. So it's a really interesting and unique way and it's the perfect way to be able to track your daily routine and then, you know, carve out little pieces here and there. Oh, my, you know, my food from this day, not so good. I got to change up what I ate. What did I eat? And along the lines in the app, you can actually put in what food you ate and track how your HRV responds to it. So it's super cool. It's very unique, uh, it, it, you know, in terms of customizing it to each person, because the point of HRV is, each person is so unique, there is no generally accepted rules for it. You have to be mindful. You know, using HRV is not an end all be all. It's not a magic pill. It's not a it's 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 not a unicorn. It's something that you have to tend to. It's something that you have to be patient with and something that if you don't want to do it, then it's never going to work for you and don't buy any of these products. But, you know, we're trying to make it a little bit more simple to have these events so that you can actually make changes to improve your life. So the last product is a little bit different. And th there's a main reason why I've included this product, and it's the Empatica E4 band. Um, if you're going to look at the price right away, it's crazy. It's like 1100 bucks. But just hang on a second. Hang on. The reason that I brought it up is because they went from a very different angle. So they started out clinically, right? So there's really two ways that you can start a wearable company, I suppose. You know, get a consumer product out there as inexpensive as possible, get it out and then make the fixes. Or you can go from the medical side of things and then work backwards to the consumer space. Uh, so the latter would be what Empatica did. The They offer, you know, they offer 
heart rate variability on some of their devices. Also, uh, PPG, uh, so photoplastomography, the same uh, optical sensor. They have skin temperature and then EDA. Don't even get me started on this EDA garbage. But the good thing about this is they, as they work backwards, they are going to be developing smaller devices that are cheaper, not cheaper from the sense of you know material, uh, less expensive and more available to everyday consumers. So that's one of the main reasons I wanted to include this. I wanted to come at it from, so we know the Aura Ring, we've seen Up Mood, which is a, a really unique spin on heart rate variability. We saw the IO Sleeve, which is the only EKG based, uh, HRV monitor, accuracy, customization, and then the Empatica is the one to look out for in the future. And I think a lot of people, if you're watching this video, if you're willing to spend that $400, uh, you're going to spend money on this as well. Because at the end of the day, there are other products that have monthly fees. That's another thing we didn't mention with the first uh, first two options. And I think Empatica too, all three options, no monthly fees. Uh, neither does Aura actually. So that's a good thing as far as I know from the date of this video, maybe they have something for content, but there's other products like Whoop uh, that have monthly fees. So there, that's why if something like that Empatica band is for you, they have very unique features. You know, you look through their website, they've partnered with Harvard and Oxford and Schmucks, you know, all the, all the big, big schools. So, you know, they have the credibility and a lot of that is, you know, in the decision making of you, the consumer. So if that's something that you're looking at, something that's proven, quote unquote, um, you know, certified, all that kind of all that jazz, you know, that might be a good product. But the the Empatica, I just wanted to mention as something to look for in the future. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was just my take on the best alternatives. I didn't want it to be like the CNN top 10 that are paid for. Um, I wanted to get a couple products out there that, you know, maybe people aren't familiar with. Uh, I know hundreds of them. So if you guys would be interested in seeing more videos on that, please let me know.